And that cheat code is when you do this very specific breathing technique, you unlock certain abilities within yourself to see visions. I had people able to talk to um, their loved ones who had crossed over, visiting other dimensions, astral projecting, like crazy stuff that if someone has never heard of this modality that I teach, it would sound unbelievable. And I would have to agree with them until they do it. Hey friends, my name is Gabby Rosley, and this is the Crucial Conversations podcast, a platform dedicated to self-fulfillment and breaking the cycle of wasted potential. Using the tools of perspective, knowledge, wisdom, and awareness, I, with the help of qualified expert guests, share free insight and proven strategies that lead to all forms of success. If you are ready to start investing in yourself and living the life of your dreams, because I promise it is possible for all of us, you came to the right place. Together, we will help each other level up and have the crucial conversations necessary to do so. Everyone, welcome to the Crucial Conversations podcast. We are back and better than ever with another episode. And today, I have a very, very exciting speaker joining us to talk about all things mindfulness and breath work. And we're just going to see where this combo takes us. Curtis Lee Thomas is joining us today, and he is a distinguished corporate mindfulness trainer and influential public speaker. He has worked with several Fortune 500 companies and prestigious organizations, including NASA, Nike, and the Capital Group. Curtis has developed the Breathwork Detox Method, and we're going to break that down today. It actually gained recognition on the Today Show, and his teacher training program in Breathwork Detox was just named the 2024 Program of the Year by Best Holistic Life magazine. That same magazine also named him the 2024 Entrepreneur of the Year. And surprise, surprise, there's more. He is a number one international best-selling author. In other words, we are going to get deep with the man, the myth, the legend. So Curtis, I'm really excited to have you here on the show. Welcome to the Crucial Conversations podcast. That intro was so good. I want to hear the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about a lot today, but you have done some really, really profound work. And it's all about breathwork detox method. When I look you up online, like your Instagram and everything like that, I know you got a lot more to you, but I want to start with breathwork. And I kind of just want you to tell us how you got to this point. Why breathwork? There are so many other mindfulness methods, and I want to know why breathwork is your jam. Yeah, so breathwork is definitely my jam. I feel like I found the secret sauce. And I feel like when people go on this this journey, right, this uh, spiritual awakening or, you know, just journey to self-discovery or experiencing complicated health problems or whatever it is, you know, the journey entails many, you know, different, different paths and all roads lead to uh, Rome, right? So for me, you know, I'm the type of person when something interests me, I want to like sink my teeth into it and learn everything about it. So I have this insatiable appetite, you know, for like knowledge. And I first got certified as a life coach in 2011. And from there, I became certified NLP practitioner, hypnotherapist, Reiki master, sports science, fitness professional, uh, all these different modalities. And then I also had health complications. So um, I had a stomach issue where doctors couldn't tell me what was wrong with me. You never mind even fix me. So that happened for five years. I was suffering. And along this path of certification collecting and suffering, I found this deep diaphragmatic breathing technique. It's like this lost ancient art and it's very simple, but it's so profound. Now, mind you, right around the time, I was also taking executives and CEOs to the jungles of Peru to drink ayahuasca with the original Shipibo tribe. So I was very well versed into modalities and biohacks and plant medicine. So I kind of knew it was out there and I, I tried many things. And when I found this uh, very specific breathing technique, I did one session and it completely eradicated my stomach condition. And not only did it do that, but it brought so much clarity and healing and mm -hmm. euphoria, in, which I hadn't felt in, in so long. And once it healed my stomach condition in one session, um, I don't know about you, but I'm a very skeptical <laughs> Capricorn 
you know, very logical, analytical. I got to see it to believe it. You know, that's who I was. So I couldn't wrap my head around how I've had all these certification skill sets, did all these modalities, tried all these, you know, you know, different outlets and breathing a little stupid breathing technique is what completely changed the game for me. And as soon as that settled in, um, you know, I was a serial entrepreneur as well. I decided to exit all the companies I was a part of, everything that I was doing. Luckily, I was able to take every one of my skill sets and certifications that I collected and created breathwork detox. So I took that mm-hmm. technique and made it even more powerful and profound. And I just made a vow to myself that I'm going to bring this to the world because, you know, I was a decade in researching this stuff on a daily basis and I didn't know this existed. I didn't know you could have such profound breakthroughs by breathing. And here we are. (laughs) Yeah, that is an incredible story. I want you to expand upon clarity and euphoria. What does that feel like? Can you kind of talk about the process that you take the people through in breathwork detox in order to achieve things like clarity, like euphoria, and to shed some of these layers and, and turn the light on? Okay. Yeah. Let's start with clarity because clarity became something that I valued so much in life because I feel like the opposite of clarity is confusion and confusion is temporary insanity. It Mm -hmm. sucks when you don't know where to go in life or what to do or that next step to take. And you're confused about your mission, your purpose. You feel like you're wasting time getting older and that clarity is so valuable because, you know, a lot of people don't have that clarity and they're just going through the mechanics of life and, you know, trying to get all these things done, but you're going nowhere fast and direction is more important than speed. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have clarity, then you have a target to hit. And if you don't have that target, you have nothing to hit. And when you have that clarity, you know, you're going, it doesn't matter how fast you're going because slow motion is better than no motion. You know, and it's just about having that clarity and being persistent towards it, you know, towards that worthy ideal goal. So clarity, you know, even I think clarity is even connected to creativity because, you know, where does, where does clarity and creativity, you know, how do you get it? If I was just like, Hey, I want clarity and creativity. You just don't get it. But what you do is remove all the things that's in the way of the clarity and the creativity. Mm. And you have to energetically do that. You have to clear the the mind and also the, the body. And I'm not saying, you know, forms of excretion. I'm talking energetically. You know, we are made up of energy. And in order to manifest, everyone listening here is manifesting something, whether it's love, more money, opportunity, whatever it is. You're manifesting something. And what I realized is that in order to let in, you do have to let go. Mm -hmm. You have to create space in your body, which is your manifesting instrument, in order to manifest what you want. Like, you know, you are the investment that you need to make. You are the, the job that you need to work on. And you need to work harder on yourself than you do your job. And you're the longest relationship that you will ever have. And when you take care of your mind, your body, and your spirit, your life will take care of itself, right? Because Mm -hmm. you're the only problem you'll ever have, but you're also the only solution you'll ever need. And people are always trying to fix the things externally. And that's the wrong game because your, your external world is a manifestation of your internal world. And we're not taught in school how to change our internal world. And that is our emotions, our shitty belief systems, and, you know, whatever it may be. And this modality allows you to do that. Now, how does breathwork bring you clarity? Well, I can start by explaining it in a woo-woo terms because I say this to people and they think I'm crazy. And then they go through the process and they're like, oh my God, you're right. You know, (laughs) with breathwork, you hit this point right around, you know, eight to 12 minutes, you hit your peak resistance. Because this isn't like a normal technique, like just so people know, you're not sitting Indian style, kumbaya, breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Like, no, this is a whole lot adventure. Mm -hmm. And when you reach around like eight to, let's say, you know, 12 minutes of the breath work, you hit your peak resistance. 
And you have to make the decision to breathe past that moment. And when you do, something amazing happens in in the in the brain. And the woo-woo term is you enter this like quantum realm where all the answers to all your questions reside. And it's not really woo-woo because there's science behind it. Mm-hmm. And what happens is the brain goes into something called transient hypofrontality. And that's when the prefrontal cortex of the brain quiets down. And that's important because that's the executive decision maker, right? It's the one that says, this is good. This is bad. You're you on me. It's the, the separator, right? And it's also the monkey mind and the critic and the self-saboteur. And when you're able to quiet that down, then all of a sudden you have access to the subconscious mind and while you're in this trance state and the level of clarity, you actually go into flow state. So mm-hmm. transient hypofrontality is, is what happens when somebody goes into the flow state and like, you know, Kobe Bryant drops 80 points in a game effortlessly. It's just because your body just enters the space yes. and it's really hard to go there. There's entire companies that dedicate um, research, you know, flow research collective with Stephen Kotler and breathwork will biohack you into that space where that clarity resides, where you can find the answers to your mission, your purpose, or the next step to take in life. And that's the process that breathwork detox induces euphoria. So interestingly enough, there's this magical substance in the brain called, well, in the body called DMT, dimethyltryptamine. They did a whole documentary on Netflix, on Netflix called The Spirit Molecule. And it is what's responsible for launching you in a completely different dimension when you go to bed at night and you dream. So realistically, theoretically, it is the world's most realistic virtual reality compound that is in every single human being. And when we go to bed, your pineal gland will secrete the DMT and launches you into this dream state where you're there and then you wake up and you're like, oh, that felt so real. And then you go back to your life. But that's like the most magnificent thing ever. And what's interesting is that the lungs the t- and the tissues hold more dimethyltryptamine in the body than the pineal gland. So when you start this very specific technique, like I like to give the example of a video game. We all played video games before. And in these video games, some of these games are programmed with cheat codes. And you in the game, you can hit up, down, left, right, A, B, A, B, and then boom, you know, Mario grows 12 feet. Or, you know, you get like these double swords or whatever the heck it is. Uh, you know, and humans programmed those video games, right? Well, the most, you know, sophisticated biomechanical machine on the planet is actually the human body. It's magnificent. Like just the fact that I could make a little cut on my wrist and then a week later it heals itself. Like that's unbelievable. Well, who made humans, right? And, and I'm not going religious, but a higher power that's obviously way more intelligent than us created this whole thing. So they, that, that programmer, quote unquote, programmed humans with a cheat code. And that cheat code is when you do this very specific breathing technique for a very specific amount of time, and the way that I show people how to, you unlock certain abilities within yourself to see visions. I had people able to talk to um, their loved ones who had crossed over, visiting other dimensions, astral projecting, like crazy stuff that if someone has never heard of this modality that I teach, it would sound unbelievable. And I would have to agree with them until they do it. And then, you know, it will change your life. It will change the game. And that's why I'm all in on this. I am so glad that we went here as quickly as we did, because I feel like this is such, this is so rich in, in, in your passion for it and in the science behind it, but also the connection to spirit that obviously this has such a deep, deep saturation of. And so I'm really happy that we started out on this note. And when we were talking about clarity and the shedding layers, you know, I think that as we start to awaken and as we start to elevate and expand our consciousness, that is the most critical part of the process is to shed these layers of conditioning that we have had, you know, piled onto us for years and years and years. 
and becoming aware of them is is the key. I'm a person who thinks all the time. And when I'm constantly thinking and I'm operating from that prefrontal cortex, it's like almost too much. It's like hyper awareness. And so the breath work, it, it activates this ability for like a deeper wisdom to come into the mind and come into the body and then connect those dots that we can't with the ego because the ego doesn't want to connect the dots because then it's the death of the ego. To further my prying into this modality, when did you know that your mission was to serve other people? Like when, how, when did it become apparent to you that you were put here to help this shift, to help this domino effect in the light that you're currently in? Yeah, I would say... Something happened in 2011. Uh, prior to 2011, I call that my my past life, right? Mm. And I feel like I had a couple of those. But 2011, prior to that, you know, it was like anything else. You know, I was just focused on, you know, my growing my business, being an entrepreneur. And, you know, once the big shift happened, I had my awakening. And I think a lot of people, everybody um, is either in the midst of their awakening. It's probably why they listen to podcasts, you know, instead of watching TV and other things because they want to become a better person. And that's when that light switches on. And there's many paths to the awakening. You know, it could be something highly spiritual that just completely rocks your world. It could be something health concerned. It could be the loss of a loved one. It could be an accident. There's just so many things. And those, you know, powerful things need to happen in order to shake your world, right? Because at the time when my world got turned upside down, um, it really got turned right side up mm. because part of the awakening, like when I say spiritual awakening, I'm not just talking about like you found Jesus, right? That's not what it is. It's one, it's finding that there's deeper le uh, layers to yourself. And then also realizing that we were, we, we live in a matrix, mm. meaning there, we live in a world that's controlled by systems and old, outdated beliefs and, you know, things that we just accepted as a status quo or the general consensus of humanity's reality. When I can tell you this much, there's billions of planets out there. And whether you believe in life on other planets or not, I can tell you this. We're not meant to be working just to survive. That is crazy. And that is only on this planet. And people just think it's normal, right? No. Um, there it it life is supposed to be much, much better. And we've allowed it to be, you know, designed this way. And I think part of that awakening is is realizing that, you know, maybe everything that was taught to us in school might not be true. And it could be scary for people when their reality begins to crumble, but it's actually a beautiful thing because I, I love, even in your own world and in the macro to the, the micro to the macro and in, you know, the world that we live in society, because the great Mayan uh, grandfather, Don Alejandro said, the very walls that we're going to see come crashing and crumbling down in front of us, uh, only the walls that kept us in prison our entire lives. So there's a lot of liberation and freedom and abundance that is humanity's birthright that is is coming our way. So there's a lot to to look forward to. I'm not sure if I just went on a huge tangent or I even answered your question, but <laughs> no, no, was, you're uh, you're getting there, you're getting there, and I love it. And I'm really happy <laughs> that you mentioned something about the different forms of getting to this awakening because I feel like I like God bless the spiritual community, love them to death, and I have a lot of, you know, ties to that community. And I think it's a beautiful place to experience conscious community and different practices and modalities and connection with spirit and the divine. But I do believe that sometimes the woo woo does steer people away. And so like, let's say you're kind of on that bridge, or maybe you're going through this awakening, but you didn't have this vision, or you didn't go to the jungle to take ayahuasca. And you actually did you had a health problem, or you lost someone. And it's just like getting you to a deep state of consciousness. A deeper state of consciousness does not mean that you had to meditate until the point that you were floating. Like that's not, you know, what, what this is all about. And so I'm really glad that you touched on that because I do think that it can become a little bit like exclusive when we put certain terms to deeper states of consciousness. Um, 
and people who may associate spirituality with religion are, are kind of steered away or people who think that spirituality is actually the devil's work. Like they're, they're, you know, steered away. And so I'm glad that you made that connection, that this is essentially a profound experience that one has, no matter what arena that experience is had in, it just gets you to a higher state of awareness of self and then of other people. So I'm really glad that you touched on that. And my original question had been, when did you know it was your mission? And basically what I gathered from your explanation of awakening and a little bit about your own was that you awakened to this idea that you have a deeper purpose and you just started living it out and here's where it got you. But you didn't know it was going to get you to this point, if if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in 2011 is when a bunch of crazy things happen, right? And I, I hit what you call rock bottom. And mm. rock bottom will teach you lessons that mountaintops never will. <laughs> and you only got to hit that space once. And that was, uh, that was my awakening. And then once I, it was weird because, you know, something I realized about life is that you can go through the mechanics of doing things and not even know why you're doing them. So once this happened and I was like, oh, I think I want to be a life coach. And then, oh, I got this certification. Let me go to this. And the next thing you know, it's a decade and I'm fully immersed in this. And like, wow, how did I, how did I get here? And I think once you start helping people, that feeling that you get when you can align helping people with a career, I think that's ultimately where everyone wants to get to, right? Because a lot of people are in jobs and they're committing spiritual suicide and what I mean by that is they're not aligned with their own values and don't know their purpose or their mission or, or why they're here. And it doesn't make sense anymore that they're using the most, their most valuable commodity in the world, which is their time in exchange for money on top of being undervalued and, and overworked. And, you know, you, no matter what you do, if you can find joy in, in what you do, and if you don't have joy in what you're doing, I mean, you got to get out because you're, you're sleeping eight hours a day. You're in eight, work eight hours a day, and that's like 33% of your life that, you know, you're unhappy if you're in a job that, that you don't like. So, you know, and, and to find what's going to make you happy, you need to not be afraid on what's on the other side, right? Uh, or mm -hmm the unknown and really just kind of checking in with yourself and, and, and seeing, you know, if you are happy and, and it sounds so simple, but you know, people will feel stuck. They'll feel stuck in a relationship. They'll feel stuck in a job because they feel like they can't get better and you have to let go in order to let in. And that is a, a scary thing to do for some people when they don't know what's on the other side, but it's typically something way more beautiful, you know, and even if, you know, their path is difficult, it's probably because their calling is higher. Yeah. And difficult roads will often lead to beautiful destinations. I love that. The last thing that you just said. I want to hear a little bit more about some of the people that you've worked with in, in your program, in Breathwork Detox. Like, I want to hear about real life examples and, and real life people who have gone through this process. And I would love to hear some of the success stories, some of the breakthroughs that you've witnessed in people as they have gone through this, um, this practice, this method, the, the detox. So you mentioned earlier about shedding layers, right? And I'm not sure if people know what that means, but there's, there's many layers to herself. And a lot of that is, you know, uh, personality based on the projection of the emotions that we're holding on to, um, the beliefs that we that we have, and you know, sometimes in the this breathing process, some people will feel like a tingling, or even a burning sensation. And I tell people, if you feel a tingling or burning, just know it's not burning you; it's burning everything that you're not. Mm. So you're able to literally feel the layers of the false beliefs and old outdated energy, stagnant energy, just like either burning well, away or activating certain pots, parts of your, of your body. And, you know, one guy, I went, I did a retreat and his name was, he was there. His name was Mark Victor Hansen. And for those who don't know that name, he uh, authored Chicken Soup for the Soul, which holds the Guinness Book World Record for 
most books sold. He sold a half a billion books, which is 500 million books. So he's like one of the godfathers to personal development. If you want to talk about somebody who has, you know, a whole arsenal of, of modalities and ways to help people, uh, he took my breath work. He came up to me afterwards and he said, I need your email. And I was like, okay. He's like, I got to talk to you, but I don't know what the heck I just experienced and what you just did to me. He's like, but I need to process this. So he ended up reaching out two weeks later and he sent me a beautiful email. And he said, out of all these tools I had, how long I've been doing this, I just did one session of breathwork detox and it allowed me to forgive somebody I've been trying to forgive for over 30 years. I can't wow. thank you enough. So how would breathing allow you to forgive somebody, right? It's because we hold on to grudges, right? And when you hold on to grudges, you're holding on to pain. Mm -hmm. And stories create stored emotions. So the body is a living library of all the experiences that we had. So if you want to think about it like this, the mind tends to always think in the future, right? That's why we have anxiety. The body holds on to the past, but the soul always wants to be present. So when I say hold on to the past and trauma, what happens is when we experience trauma, think about even when we're younger, which we don't think about now, but when back we were, when we were young, if we didn't get picked for dodgeball or we got pushed off the swing in front of everyone, or we gave our, our crush a note and they teared it up in front of us, right? That is traumatic. And it's so traumatic. The issue is when we're that young, we don't have the emotional intelligence to mm -hmm. process those things. So we store it. We store it in, in our, in our bodies. And what happens is we don't, we don't work on it or process it. So it accumulates and compounds. And this is why anxiety and depression is the number one disability worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. And 40 million Americans are on anxiety prescription meds. And like the statistics are real, but I have the question, why? And it all has to do with the processing of emotions. It, it really, like if you can free yourself from all the things you're holding on to, you will become smarter, sexier, wiser, more confident. Like stress will make you stupid. It, it, it really will because it limits how you think. Like if there's a tiger in front of you, your brain goes, okay, let's not be creative and let's just focus on running or staying here, right? Well, if you're constantly in stress and your body's in sympathetic you know, nervous system, well, all your creativity kind of narrows down and you you lose the ability to think vast. So this is why like, I work with companies like Nike. I work with companies like NASA because they found the value in alleviating workplace stress mm. in order to increase productivity, enhance creativity. So, you know, you have Guinness Book World Record, you know, holders uh, doing this technique, huge Fortune 500 companies like Nike, one of the most prestigious organizations. I have a little NASA guy behind there. I don't know if they can see that, um, you know, doing this and all types of, you know, uh, celebrities that I, I worked with, I, I won't name them. And in, it's so interesting how so many people don't know this exists. And I feel like just recently it's been gaining popularity. Now, if I were to share with you all the success stories of what I witnessed, we would enter, enter woo-woo land because <laughs> I have led, led breath work for tens of thousands of students all over the world and well over 27 countries by now. And I've witnessed hundreds of miracles. When I say miracles, I've seen uncurable things get cured. Mm. I've seen people have breakthroughs. I had people who, I'm not sure if you heard of like Tony Robbins platinum membership. It's like $7,500,000 membership. Yep. I had several people who, you know, have taken all of Tony's uh, events and are platinum members saying, I can't believe I spent a year with Tony Robbins and spent a hundred thousand dollars. And I just paid $37 to do an event for two hours and got more from your two hour event than I did in a year with Tony. And, wow. you know, I'm not tuning my own horn, but I've, I've heard this multiple times and it's this modality. It's this, it's this process. It's was so profound that I, I, I just had to make sure that everyone at least tries it. And that's why 
I'm on these podcasts. I wrote a book on it. And I'm doing my best to get people curious. You know, you don't got to believe me. I don't expect you to believe me. I wouldn't believe me if I was listening to me. Um, but if I can just say enough where you're like, I at least want to try it to see if this guy is, you know, full of BS. And I will guarantee you this, you will have an experience because unlike yoga and meditation, the results of breathwork detox are immediate and undeniable from one session. And you don't even have to say a word. <laughs> if, if somebody's going to listen, and I guarantee there are going to be many people who are going to listen to this episode and be like, let me get to breathe in. Like what, what's the next step? So the next step is, is to, to try it. Now, where do you, where do you try it? I'm not saying you have to do this with me. Just do it with anybody. You know, I have well over, um, probably hundred, 200 certified teachers that I personally certified out there all over the, the world, um, who could do this. You can go to, uh, other, uh, breathwork facilitators. Uh, the only problem I think is, is that when I'm talking about breathe, this breathing, right? I'm talking about breathing. Uh, people don't know the technique. Yeah. So when they go to look online or they go to their lo local yoga studio and they try, you know, pranayama, fire, belly, yoga, breathing, it's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is very, very specific. So if you want to experience what I'm talking about, this modality, which is the most profound cathartic breathing technique and most powerful one you can possibly do. Um, it's called breathwork detox. And there's many facilitators you, you can find. I do them virtually every, every two weeks. So um, that would be, but you know, you can do any breathing technique. And, and I have a whole, um, well, actually I won't say I have a, a whole arsenal because I purposely, when I'm working with people, I don't like to give them all these breathing techniques because you give people too many things, they're not going to do anything. So I usually mm. stick to, yeah. you know, three main ones, the one that changed my life, the one that saved my life, and the one that can biohack the brain into creativity. And that's really all these people care about, right? How do I get energy when I when I lack energy? I have one called the espresso. Um, how do I get rid of this darn stress and anxiety and panic attacks? We got one for that. You know, um, you know, and so I kind of give them the best ones on what they're dealing with because mm. the thing about the breath is that it works faster than any pill you could ever swallow. That's amazing. My next question for you is why Why now? Why do you feel like the time is so important right now? It's always important, right? Like it always has been. You know, there's never been a period of time where joy and fulfillment and community and connection has not been valuable. But why do you think it is so important for people to heal themselves and kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive into who they are and connect with their hearts and their spirits? Um, what do you think is going on right now? Like what, wh what's in the air? Oh man, there's a, there's a lot in the air. Um, before I, I go down that path, <laughs> I wrote a whole book on that. What's, what's in the air. And I'm not talking about the air. I'm talking about the energy. Um, you're saying, why would they, I would say, what would happen if, if you don't? Right. What happens if you stay the same? Because change can be painful, right? But what I feel is more painful than change is staying the same. And if you tap tap it in right now and you're like, something's not right, I'm not happy with myself, I need to feel better. Well, if something needs to change in your life, that something is you. So you need to find um modalities and things that's gonna help elevate you and get you to the next level, even. Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it. So mm -hmm. people are stuck on this hamster wheel. You know, they did a study and 80% of the average human thoughts are negative and 98% of our daily thoughts were the same thoughts we had yesterday. So you got to break that cycle and you can do it. Absolutely. You got to find the right modalities. I tried them all, <laughs> you know, at least the ones that, you know, that I, that I know about. And, you know, I found some even in India and, you know, some Himalayans. So I dedicated to finding the most powerful ones, but you know, if you just stay the same, you're not going to be happy, right? You, you need to make a, you need to make a change. So what's going on in the air. 
without going down woo woo world like we I know that there is significance and there is value and there is so much truth to it. I think it's just the terminology that steers some people away. And so, um, you know, I, I don't want anything to be off limits. I just want to make that very clear. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, great caveat. Um, there's something happening in the world. It's called the Great Awakening. It's happening in our lifetime. And there's a lot of events that are about to transpire that, you know, even if we're going biblically, right? So I'm not a religious person, um, you know, but I studied the doctrines. And if you look at them, whether you believe them or not, um, all of them are all talking about some sort of cosmic phenomenon, some sort of cosmic worldly event that's about to take place. And it's all intersecting at the same point, time, and space, which is actually our lifetime, which is hard to believe. Um, and these there's great changes upon us. And the reason why people are feeling so drawn and, and called to step into their power is because that power is going to be needed for what's to come. And there's a tsunami wave of consciousness that's about to hit the planet that's going to change this world forever. And there was like a you know, a nice little wave that came in in the 60s when everyone was like peace and love. And that was an energy actually that came into the planet and started to change people. And that is like a mini little ripple in a lake compared to the tsunami wave of consciousness that's about to hit. Now, when that consciousness wave hits, which is very, very soon, um, a lot of people are going to wake up. The matrix, the constructs of the matrix are going to begin to fall away. Uh, our financial system is going to change. Religion is going to change. The medical industry, education, everything's going to change. And that goes back to that Don Alejandro quote that I said. And what people are feeling in the air is that energy. And you don't have to like it, know it, believe it or not. You're, you're feeling it and you're feeling that, that push to get that clarity, right? Because that clarity, when you have clarity, it, it does something to you, you know, and that, and that, that curiosity, that clarity, even Tony Robbins said, they asked him like, where do you get all your motivation? He goes, I don't need motivation. My vision is so clear that it pulls me towards my goals. People are yearning to feel better. And sometimes when you can't find joy in life, you seek pleasure from external sources whether that's drugs, whether that's sex, whatever that is, you know, we are human, so it is what it is. Um, but people, they're, they're looking for something and they don't know what they're looking for. And that is called the journey. And there's more people on this journey. This is why everyone's listening to the podcast. Why do you think people are coming to Gabby's podcast, right? They want to hear your gems. They want to, they love the guests that you bring in. They're trying to better their life. They're trying to get that tiny piece of information that's going to create that big shift in their life. And sometimes that's all it takes is someone can say one thing at one certain time in your life that can completely shift you on a path. And it, you know, it could be something your parents have been telling you for 20 years, but you hear it from somebody else with their own voice inflection at the right time. And I know this because I have a very good friend. I was actually going through a really tough time. And my friend said something to me that was so simple, but it was so profound. It completely changed the trajectory of my life. And I'll share what he said to me. And he said, Curtis, he goes, do you want your life changed? And I was like, yes. He goes, then change your life. And I was like, damn. <laughs> it just hit me right there and then I'm like damn like if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results Einstein called that insanity as well and that's what people are doing they're stuck on this hamster wheel recycling those 98% of those shitty thoughts every single day and they're doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results listen to me old ways will never open up new doors mm. You got to try new things. You got to get out there. You got to be courageous. You got to be brave. You got to be willing to, um, you know, say yes to adventure, say yes to opportunity and, you know, just prepare yourself uh, for change. Sometimes it's just the intention. And when you have that strong intention, uh, the universe works in mysterious ways and, and it will bring you certain people into your life, new people into your life that will bring you into new things or they'll make you turn and in, tune into a podcast and, you know, I won't, let me check out this podcast and you listen like, this is what I needed. This is it. So 
you know, I love the universe. <laughs> <laughs> More of the story. I love the universe. No, I love everything that you just said. You're, you're flowing brother. And it's so beautiful to witness. And I love that it's kind of come full circle. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people who just heard that. And they're like, when is this tsunami going to come? Like when, is, when is this beautiful energy going to hit? And like kind of yearning to um, experience like, okay, a, a no, like, cause we want to be in control. When is, when is the date? Like, when is this coming? But the beauty of this clarity with breath work with yes, there are other modalities, but that you can experience this profound degree of clarity on an individual level when you make the choice to do so. And that's, and I think that that is the power that all of us hold. And um, I think the way that you just articulated all of that was very, very, ridden with the passion that of course you have because you've seen the effects that it's had on you and other people. Um, but it really puts the power back into the hands of each and every one of us. Like we don't have to wait for this. And I think that, you know, it is going to be very beautiful and it's going to be very profound and it is going to change the world. But what is so so beautiful about all of this is that your world can change when you go inward because of this whole external internal as is within as is without. But um, yeah, I, I just I'm I'm really, really thankful that you have been so keyed in during this episode. Um, and I really feel like this is going to touch a lot of hearts. It's touched my heart. And so I just want to thank you very much for being here. Um, and if there's anything else that you feel is on your heart to share, I would love to just open up the floor to do that as we kind of conclude our episode. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know why I keep quoting Einstein, but uh, this would <laughs> be my third in. Einstein quote. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I would just say that don't, ex you know, you don't have to put your pressure on like to change and to do all this and, you know, and to get to this destination because, you know, life isn't a destination, right? It's a journey and there's ups and downs. Like life isn't, um, it's supposed to be a roller coaster, right? Not a carousel. And if you're on the carousel, you know, you, you, you need to, you need to create some change. And if it's a roller coaster, that's good. That means, that means you're living and, and experiencing things. Um, but all you really need is curiosity. That's all I ask from people. Like, did I, like my success today is, did I spark curiosity? And if I, and if I did to the listener, then that was a success because, um, when they asked Einstein, <laughs> he said, you know, I have no special talent. I'm just passionately curious. Mm. Curiosity will bring you a long way. And I do not think curiosity killed the cat. I think ignorance did. So curiosity is just consciousness at work. So if you're curious, that means your consciousness and awareness is expanding. I love that. And the thing about curiosity that I think is so beautiful, there's like this youthful nature to curiosity because it puts you in this position where you don't feel like you have to have the answer. And that's when the expansion is able to step in because you like, if we're talking about all of these amazing things and these elevated states of consciousness and the divine, it's like we as human beings, like we're, we are not the highest operating form of wisdom in in this moment right here, right now, like there's so much out there, you know? And so it's like when we can allow ourselves not to have to have an answer and we can get curious about what else is out there, I feel like that is what creates the space. That's what brings in the, brings in this opportunity for imagination and that same creativity and curiosity because we aren't trying to create the answer out of what we know, which is limited. It's limited right now for a reason. Um, so yeah, I think that's where the expansion happens is the curiosity. So yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. So you absolutely will, right? We'll, <laughs> we'll hook you up with the, with the free ticket. And if any of your guests would like to try breathwork detox, then uh, we created a code, especially for you. They can get 50% off a virtual ticket and all they have to do is put the code in podcast 50. And podcast 50 will get them 50% off. And I do them every new moon, every full moon. So <laughs> every two weeks. Hell yeah, that is awesome. I'll make sure to put all of that in the description. I'll put your information in there as well as the uh, promo code. So thank you again, Curtis. And I wish you the best of luck. And I'm sure we'll be in touch and I'll be seeing lots of you in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Gabby. Hey, y'all. Before you head out, I just want to say thank you. 
Thank you for listening to this episode. And most importantly, thank you for making the conscious decision to invest in yourself and expand your mind. By doing so, you are helping to elevate us all to live better lives. By showing up and emulating the things that you learned in today's crucial conversation, you are inspiring those around you. If you want to continue this domino effect, share this episode with someone that you want to help to unlock their maximum potential. And connect with me on Instagram at Gabby Rosley Co. to share your valuable feedback and offer recommendations for what you'd like to hear in future episodes. I love you all. Keep shining your unique lights. And I will see you next time on the Crucial Conversations podcast.